Hi, my name is Erica Turner and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist here at Group Therapy Associates. And I wanted to talk today about infidelity and cheating, um, which can be a very difficult and painful subject um, for couples. Um, and basically I wanted to talk about kind of the two patterns of cheating that I see in, in my work with couples and somewhat with individuals, but often in couples therapy is where we're talking about cheating most of the time. Um, and I thought it could be helpful just in terms of helping understand a little bit more about why people cheat, um, but then also um, what that means for the person who has been betrayed and um, to a certain extent what that means for the person who um, was unfaithful. Um, so, I mean, I would say definitely the biggest pattern of um, infidelity that I see in, in my work um, is someone who basically they, they developed a relationship with someone often at work um, or a friend um, and that relationship over time became inappropriate. Um, you know, maybe it started off very sort of casually and 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 not you know anything you know anything um, inappropriate was happening. But over time, you know, there might have been sharing of sexy pictures. There might have been um, talking about problems at home. Um, so there's both. There's often an emotional connection that builds and then sometimes that results in a physical connection, right? Like then it results in, in them being physically um, intimate with that person. Um, so, you know, in most of those cases, this is someone who didn't set out to be unfaithful. Um, and we'll talk, a lot, we'll talk a little bit about whether people set out to be unfaithful or not. But in this case, these folks often did not intend to be unfaithful. Um, they didn't necessarily go into this interaction with this person thinking that they were going to cheat on their partner. Um, but over time, something developed. And often it's because it's as a result of there being some disconnect in their relationship with their partner. Um, maybe they've grown apart. Maybe they don't spend a lot of time together. Maybe they're, you know, busy with kids and, and other things and they just haven't made space for themselves, like for their relationship. Um, maybe there's something that they need that they're not getting from their partner, um, whether that be sex, friendship, shared interest, whatever. Um, but basically this, this relationship with this other person fills the gap for them in some way, fills some sort of need, even if that is as basic as attention and affection, um, which is basic, but you know, necessary. We all need to feel um, wanted. We all need to feel liked, desired. Um, and if for some reason you feel like you're not getting at that in your primary relationship, sometimes people start seeking it elsewhere. Um, and again, often not purposefully. Like I have people who are like, I never thought I would do this. I can't believe I did this. Um, I'm not this kind of person. Um, and, you know, partly in this video, I want to say that I think at this point, I think everyone who needs to be sort of on guard in terms of protecting the relationship and protecting their connection, their relationship. I don't think that people who, you know, commit this kind of infidelity or are unfaithful in this way are bad people. They're, you know, they're people who have made mistakes and there are people who didn't recognize what was happening early enough to stop it from, from getting worse or becoming more of a problem. Um, and absolutely they have to take accountability. Absolutely they have to atone for their behaviors with their partner. Um, and they have to do the work to heal what they've done if they want the relationship to continue. Um, but, you know, often these are people who did not set out to kind of end up in this space of being unfaithful. Um, so there's that. That's that's pattern number one. It's definitely the pattern I see by far the most with, with my couples that I work with. Pattern number two 
um, is someone who has a history of being unfaithful. Um, so not only have they been unfaithful in this relationship, sometimes multiple times, but they've been unfaithful with previous partners. Um, they are often open about the fact that they've been unfaithful with, other, with previous partners. Um, they are typically more actively seeking out being unfaithful. Um, they are at the very least open to it. Um, but often what I see is they're, they're looking for it. They're looking to have another relationship, an outside relationship. Um, and this pattern of behavior is, is much harder to break because it has a lot more to do with what's happening internally for that person individually than it does for the relationship. Um, and, you know, there's something that they get from being unfaithful. There's some need that it fills or possibly there's a dispute, like they don't believe in commitment, um, but they haven't, you know, they haven't been honest with their partner about that belief. Um, so that pattern is much harder to break and much more sort of, when I encounter um, couples where one partner has that pattern, um, you know, I really want them to be in both couples therapy and individual therapy to sort of figure out what's going on there. Um, and to be honest with themselves about what they want and what they need. I mean, if you don't want to be in a committed relationship or if you want to be in an open relationship or um, whatever, to be honest with yourself about that and to be honest with your partner about that and find someone who matches that. Um, so that's, it's, a, it's trickier to break. Like, I don't think there's any sugar coating that. And I think that if they're going to break that pattern, in some ways they have to want to do that for themselves, that it's not just that they want to do it for this person that they're in a relationship with, that they want to make some change in and of themselves because it, it's typically going to take deeper work to do that. Um, the magical love that you guys have together is not going to be enough to break that pattern because this person has been doing this for years. I mean, sometimes, you know, I see people with this pattern, they've been doing it ever since they started dating when they were teenagers um, in their early twenties. And they're, this is how it's been the whole way out. So in order to break that, they're going to have to do some deeper work. Um, so I say this just to talk a little bit about how, you know, some of the motivations in terms of why people cheat and then how in terms of recognizing what's going on with your partner. If your partner has been unfaithful to sort of look at the whole picture, is something going on in our relationship? Does this person have a history of being unfaithful? And particularly if you're not married or you're not, you know, deeper in sort of the relationship to say, if this person has a history of being unfaithful, um, unless they're going to do some deeper work, it's just not going to break for no reason. Um, now that doesn't mean that someone who has, you know, doesn't have this larger pattern of being unfaithful. It doesn't mean that it's just going to be like magical kittens and sunshines to make the relationship better and heal from infidelity. Um, but then you're mostly working on healing from infidelity and fixing whatever was wrong in the relationship that caused the disconnect as opposed to having to do that, that plus try to figure out the deeper stuff that's going on with this person that's making them unfaithful with all of their partners or many of their partners that they've had over time. Um, yeah. So I'd love to hear folks' questions, comments, thoughts, uh, disagreements, um, any other patterns that you have seen or you've heard of, um, that you'd like for us to talk about. Um, we are, everywhere online, um, but you can find us on Instagram at Therapy is Not a Dirty Word, or Twitter at GTA Therapist. Um, you can leave a comment on our YouTube page here, um, or, you know, like grouptherapyassociates.com and therapies.dirtywordcraft.com. So basically, if you throw, like, a stone, you'll find us anywhere. Um, yeah, definitely love to hear folks' questions, comments, and maybe do another video. Thanks.